What up, what's happening everybody? My name is Charles Blades and this is The Hot Take. I know it's the week before E3, so you might be expecting me to do something regarding that, but instead I'm going to focus on something that's not on a lot of people's radar. So without further much ado, here we go. It's E3 weekend and all kinds of new and fresh games are about to be unveiled for the first time. We're about to be treated to new trailers, release dates, and a helping of foolish gaffes from CEOs of major game companies. However, in this episode, I don't want to talk about new games at all. I want to specifically use this episode to talk about one thing in particular, older games. Specifically, games on PS1, PS2, and PS3 that seem to have, for the most part, been forgotten about by the very company that's made them. This week, Jim Ryan, the president of Sony Interactive Entertainment Europe, gave an interview with Time before E3 and said this. We've dabbled with backwards compatibility. I can say it's one of those features that is requested, but not actually used much. That? And I was at a Gran Turismo event recently, and they had PS1, PS2, PS3, and PS4 games. And the PS1 and PS2 games, they looked ancient! Why would anyone play this? Now, on its face, this quote is about as off the mark as someone working within this industry can be while talking about it. Obviously, most people going back to play older games aren't doing so because they want a stunning visual spectacle. No. Old game players go back to recapture magic that games might have brought them years ago. Or they might go back to learn about the history of games and where they might have come from. Irregardlessly of why, people obviously thoroughly enjoy going back and playing stuff that isn't the latest entry in a series. I know this, for a fact. Not because I have hard sales data to back it up, but because companies keep releasing remasters and updates of old games. Sony can't in one breath say backwards compatibility isn't something that people would use that much, then in the next breath release God of War 3, The Last of Us Remastered, The Uncharted Collection, and a bunch more old games on their new system. You don't release something without a fan base you know and expect will want to buy it, unless you're Battleborn. So quite frankly, it's a work of fiction that Sony believes people wouldn't use backwards compatibility. Sure, it might not be the overwhelming majority of people, but there is a hardcore dedicated community of people that make up not just the sliver of the video gaming community that would love to play old games. Plain and simple, the reason Sony doesn't want to include backward compatibility on PS4 is that it harms the re-release market. Now I'm not saying no game should ever be re-released, countless re-releases have come out each year that do enough to justify their existence by bundling in extra content or adding in new modes or ways to play them. But God of War 3, for example, is a game that came out this decade that doesn't need an upgrade in graphics. God of War 3 looked fine on PS3, and despite a 60 frames per second mode, there wasn't anything new added to justify its existence on PS4. However, with a lot of people joining the PlayStation ecosystem for the first time this console generation, a bunch of Xbox 360 gamers missed out on the God of War franchise. So, by re-releasing it with minute updates to its performance, Sony got 40 bucks from a whole group of people who just wanted to play an older game that could be available via backwards compatibility. A group of people that made this game chart on NPD the month that it was released. And a group of people Sony claims doesn't exist. Now, nothing I'm saying here is particularly revolutionary. This is called the hot take after all, and well, many people have been saying forever that Sony should have backwards compatibility on the PS4. Since the beginning of this console generation, people have been clamoring for it and calling out big companies on their bullshit. Oh, the cell infrastructure is too difficult to make it happen, and so on and so forth. But, on the eve of E3, where two years ago Phil Spencer came out on stage and explained how they made Xbox 360 emulation possible on the Xbox One, making a whole slew of Xbox 360 games backwards compatible in the process, it's important to reiterate how the current console leader is still bullshitting 50 million of their customers by trotting out nonsense like, why would anyone play this as an excuse for not having a feature that their past two consoles launched with. I can't be the only one that thinks this is a serious issue. While I may be beating a dead horse, I can't help but notice that the whole games industry is getting ready to talk about new games that won't be released until 2019 this week. And the fact that I'm discussing a problem that's five years old might seem a little silly, but the fact that Sony haven't done anything to address this problem in over five years is even worse. 
and the fact that they put out statements like I can't understand why anyone would want to play this just shows how old Sony they are and how misguided their view on backwards compatibility is in 2017. So those are my thoughts on backwards compatibility. Like, subscribe, share, all that YouTube stuff. And we're going to be doing a late episode of the current gaming podcast this week that's going to go live on Tuesday because we want to get everything from E3 besides Nintendo. So be sure to check that out and see ya.